tw- from the year 2023 up to now, our fathers have sought to diligently bring out the moral values for our national development. Can I have my slides, please? And this year, the church seeks to be unleashed so that we may be empowered to defend the values in every context. Values and principles of the kingdom of God. From what we said, Vision 2023 was saying that possessing the nations. Then we said that equipping the church with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. Now, Vision 2028 is unleashing the church, but still with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. So we are possessing, we are possessing the world. With what? The values and principles of the kingdom of God. We are transforming our world. With what? The values and principles of the kingdom of God. We seek to impact our spheres. With what? The values and the principles of the kingdom of God. So have this understanding that underpinning all that we are doing is that we are transforming our world with what? Hey, why? Have you let me? Please come to church. Come to church. Let me say this again. The Vision 2023 was equipping the church with the values and principles of the kingdom of God so that we could possess the nation. Now, in the Vision 2028, we are still possessing the nations. We are transforming our world with values and principles of the kingdom of God. So I want you to understand that when the church starts possessing the nations and you say, I am an agent of transformation, what are you doing? You are transforming your spheres with values and principles of the kingdom of God. So that is the understanding we need to have. That all that we are doing is that we are being driven by the principles and the values of the kingdom of God. And these things, they regulate our Christian work. So in, we have a privilege to partake in the divine nature of God because the values and the principles of God are God's nature. Are you with me? The values and the principles of God, they are God's nature. And we are trying to understand them and be like God. So we participate in the divine nature so that we can escape the corruption of this world. Caused by evil desires. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. So that demonstrating the character of God in our human spheres. Demonstrating the character of God. And we are praying that the Holy Spirit will influence us. Our conscience, our minds. Which govern our motives and actions. To help us internalize these values. So all that I'm going to share with you. My prayer is that you are going to internalize them. Is going to be part of your fabric of your life. So that when you are walking, as we seek to be unleashed to transform our world, these things will be ringing at the back of our minds. That I'm transforming my world, I'm being Christ-like with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. If you are with me. Unleashing the whole church into the world to transform it. Hallelujah. Unleashing the whole church into the world to transform it. To preach the glorious word. To preach the glorious word. Be zealous in all good works. Be zealous in all good works. Save the wounded. Save all the wounded. Those living in darkness. Those living.
have a good wife oh. especially when your wife can see that you are in trouble clap for my wife small for me what hallelujah fear not he will be with us till we win fear not every day fear not because the bible enjoins us that the Lord is with us. Our going out and our coming in. He will sustain us. He holds us in his hands. And who dare take us from God's hands? We are inscribing his palms. Like the tattoo people do. We have been tattooed into the palms of God. And nobody dare comes close to us. 
So believe in your spirit that you are anchored in God. And nobody can touch you. Fear not, for he is with you. He is your God, and he will be with you. Amen. So shall we continue with our sermon? I want to explain a little bit on values. When we say values, values, what do we mean? I want to say that I'm teaching on living by the values and principles of the kingdom of God. So we are living by them. It's not just understanding them or seeking knowledge of them, but we are learning to live by them. And I've sought to explain that underpinning the, 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 the unleashing agenda is to live by the principles of the kingdom of God. So when we say values, basically it's ascribing something worth to something. This lectern is valuable, especially when it comes to church. We put a value on it. Everything in this auditorium is value. Then your life itself is valuable. So you have value. You have a worth. You have a merit or significance. That is why, especially that sense, people will say that, me, me, ni patwa. Ati wako osuna na no me. And so, ebi kura ana onfia kumase. Maybe from somewhere around kumase. But when he says that I am the, the nephew or the niece or the grandson of a Santehene, he says that Otiko Kosunananeme. But probably a Santehene doesn't even know him. Or her. But he feels that he's, he's, he has a wealth. Uh, do you understand me? We, 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 we pride ourselves in the fact that we have gold because gold has a price. We have cocoa because cocoa has a price. It is what? Valuable. It is of value. So when we say something values, we mean that it's something that has worth. Again, we are talking about something that is important in the sphere of life. The more valuable an object is, the higher price it attracts. There is a shop in, 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 in London that celebrities go to shop. It's in, Oxford, it's in Oxford Street or Victoria Street. Oxford Street, I've forgotten the name. But one pie, I've been told, the meat pie we eat, that one. If you go there, it costs 1,500 pounds. The normal shoe you have been seeing around here, you go there and maybe it's 10,000 pounds. But you and I, we only see the shop. If you're probably like me, you only see it and you pass by that's the shop. But people also enter and come out with the, the, the valuables. They have placed value on the shop. And they have placed value on the things in the shop. Why would somebody go and shop in Accra Mall? He has placed value. I hope you are understanding me. Something that is worth. It doesn't mean that where you are shopping is not valuable. But what it means is that your pocket will determine where you are going. Are you with me? Are you with me? But sometimes when God blesses you, you to pass a cram or some. You are, you are somebody. Hey, Amen. However, when we talk about values in ethics, we cannot quantify it. It's intangible, intangible character. When we say somebody has value, you cannot see it and measure the value of maybe of love in this person. But love is worth. It's valuable. It's an asset. It has significantly influenced the choices we make. So, values are moral values which are related to divine principles and constructive internal character qualities that people express in conformity to the will of God. Moral values. This person has a moral value of something. It helps him to check his life. So, you see him, he's dignified. He has a certain kind of lifestyle. It's because he has moral values, which is divine principles that has informed him. And so he is expressing a godly character. And that is a value that is internalized. If you understand me so far, please wave me. Let me see. Thank you. So these values are not cheap. The application comes with high cost. 
of the, for the individual. And one must greatly sacrifice to develop this value and the virtue. I'll be explaining, I'll try to explain some of them. And so if somebody is learning something that is valuable, that is pricey, it, it helps the person to deconstruct himself of certain thoughts and also helps him to reconstruct. And so when we come to Christ, we come with certain lifestyles, certain thought principles, patterns. But in Christ, the values that God has as his nature is, helps us to transform our lives. So that we pick on these values, then our lives are shaped. And so you see the person in a different state as before when you come to Christ. Praise the Lord. So that's why we are always on you that you cannot be as how you are when you came to Christ and still remain the same. Then your value and your principles are not being changed. But I'm praying that this morning we will have a deconstruction and reconstruction. When we talk about principles, there are rules and regulations that control human behavior. And principles are sometimes easy to explain. Principles of abiding with time. It's a principle. We start this time, we close on this time. And so you can say that this man is time conscious. You can say that this woman is not time conscious. When you get to the traffic light, the principle says, when it's red, stop. When it's get yellow, get ready. And when it's green, go, 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 and go. But as soon as you see a red light and you cross, then you have lost a principle. Because it is a set of regulations that is governing human life. And that is why the, 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 the transport people will tell us that a lot of road crashes takes place in junctions or where, we, where, we, where cars are a lot of them crossing themselves. Because, especially in our country, everybody is a master driver. And we lack patience. We are very impatient with each other. And so when you get to the traffic light and it's not working, that's where you see the highest confusion in Ghana. Many people lack principles. Just stop a little bit for somebody to move. Then the person who is somewhere will also stop that at least this guy, I came to meet him at the junction. Let me wait for him to go. You come and meet him and you want to cross him. You lack principle. May God have mercy on us. So the Oxford language dictionary defines principle as a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as a foundation for system of belief or behavior or for a certain change of reasoning. So we have all decided that the principle is that women don't enter men's washroom. Men don't enter women's washroom. It's a principle. It's, it's, it's in our mind. When you, when you are going to the washroom, the first thing you probably want to check is that, is it male or female? Nobody, so far, when you are growing, maybe your parents will teach you, but when you, you, you construct yourself to this understanding that the principle is that men uses men washroom, women use men, it's now that sometimes we have the confusion one. You go to some nations and they have drawn the man with a stomach, so that one is a confusion door, so when you're there, you, you, you understand. But the principle is, 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 is solid. Everyone knows that this one is a woman's washroom. And I don't know why, but sometimes when you travel at the airport, you don't see the confusing one. I don't know why. Maybe they have to help us. Why that one? They know that men must be in the men's washroom and women. So values and principles are similar. They, are of, they often overlap. In classification, and indeed, they are sometimes used as synonyms. So when you see value, sometimes you might not know whether it's a value or it's a principle. And so that is why I believe our dear chairman, in, in thinking, he believed that the two must work hand in hand to be able to help us to, to know how to behave. Again, we can look at the values and principles as we compare them. Principles are objective. They are, they are fixed. This is how a principle is. But values are subjective. So it may change as a result of where the context is. Again, they are, principles are legislated. They, 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 are, they are sometimes codified in laws. I'm looking at the values and principles compared. But values, they are self-evident. When somebody lacks a value, you can sometimes see that this guy, he lacks a value. 
the way his mannerism, the way he talks, the way he behaves, you can see that this one, something is missing. And we all have something missing in our lives. That is why you're able to see someone who is meeting that value in the person's life. Principles control behavior. They are there. When you go against a principle, and we all have understood that this is a principle, as soon as you go against it, eyes begin to raise against you because you have gone against the principle of something that the society has decided that this is how we are going to behave. My prayer is that these things will be part and parcel of our life. Then values, they inspire good behavior. Any, anything that is worthy of learning, when you learn it, it becomes part and parcel of your life. Then again, principles, they are permanent, but values will change with time. Let's look at the kingdom of God. So I'm trying to explain living by the values and principles of the kingdom of God. I've tried to explain the value. I've tried to explain the, king, uh, the, the principles. Now I am moving to the kingdom of God. Have you understanding that we are being unleashed to transform our world with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is the sphere of God's influence and control, which is not limited by space and time. So as soon as God comes into a place, that place becomes his kingdom, the kingdom of God, where God reigns, where God rules, where God dominates, where God controls. So in the, in, in the house of God, we can say that we are in the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God is, 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 does not have space and it's not time bound. So when I, when I am an unbeliever, I come to Christ, accept him as my Lord and my Savior, then I move from the kingdom of the devil into the kingdom of God. Why? In the kingdom of God, God reigns. God controls. He rules. Now my, my lifestyle is no longer governed by the sin of this world, but my lifestyle is governed by God's control and God's influence. Praise the Lord. So the kingdom is everywhere. Who introduced the kingdom? When God comes to live in you and his presence is in you, when you appear anywhere, you bring the influence of God at that particular place. So you cannot say that this is, I am at work. Oh, so when I'm at work, this place, there is no kingdom of God. There is a kingdom of God because you carry the kingdom of God. So when you say the kingdom of God is with men, it means that now we have many children of God who are going about their business in all spheres of life endeavor. Wherever they go, they come with the, the God, God's kingdom. So you can say that this is my lifestyle, this is home business, this is church business. No, this is secular, this is sacred. No, let believers understand that there must not be any difference. Like how we say it, there must not be any dichotomy. There must not be any distinction between my secular work and my, and my sacred life. Everything must be together because for you, the kingdom of God is in your heart. Amen. Amen. Then the kingdom of God, we can tell that it is eschatological. What we mean by eschatological is that we are in the kingdom of God anyway, but we are waiting for the full manifestation of God's presence to come and dwell with us. Because the Bible says that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And where God is, we will be with him forever. So now the kingdom of God is here because you and I are here. That is why we believe in pre-millennia, pre-tribulationa. What we mean is that believers in this world, the Antichrist has not yet begun operation. We have, must be transformed. We must be raptured. When we go, then the Antichrist will be released. But where we will be, we say, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. Then when I'm done, I will come and take you with me. Then you will be with me forever. So when the trumpets sound, and we hear the trumpet, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, we will be transformed in the twinkle of an eye by the sound of a trumpet. Then the dead in Christ will rise as though they have not died. Then those of us who are alive, 
will be caught up with him and we will be with the Lord. When we are with the Lord, then we are going to be with the Lord forever. Then what we mean by eschatological means that now the reign of God will be where we are. But everybody must make sure that when the trumpet sound, you can hear it. That is only when you are living by the principles of God. Otherwise, the trumpet will sound and you may not hear it. May God have mercy on us. Are you following me? Now, the mission contest. Society with diametrically opposed values and principles. Here, what I want to bring to bear is that in our world now, anybody who lives by the values and principles of the kingdom of God, sometimes I watch with a certain kind of eye. The world's values are totally different from the values of the kingdom of God. So the things that you do as a Christian, when you do it, the standard of the kingdom of God is dramatically opposed to the standard of the world. No wonder the things that are so clear as disobedience to God, people are accepting it. And now it has found its place in the church of God. I am talking about these things called homosexual. I am praying that, I just want to introduce this into my sermon. That young men and young women will be careful with their lives. Just this week or last week, I was listening to one of these stories. And a young man who was lured into homosexual by his teacher. His teacher in the senior high. And he was emphatic, his biologic, biology teacher. I just want to bring attention to our young men and young women here. The teacher invited him because he's very good academically. He invited him to come and he was teaching him biology, biology. He's a day student. So one day when he was teaching the biology, the time just went past. He would normally go home and come. But the teacher had an evil intention for this young man. So the teacher said, oh, since now it's late, just go and take a shower and you can sleep. And he informed the parents that your son or your, your brother my, is with me in this school. By the time the young man was in the shower, the teacher entered the shower naked. And he began to play with the young man's manhood. The young man could not shout because he felt he was in the teacher's house. Then the teacher introduced this young man into homosexuality. He continued to the time that he was taking the young man into the homosexual parties. His parents were not aware, but he was introduced into it. So he now became addicted. And he says that, he said something that was quite pathetic. The, the, the interviewer asked him, can, we, can, can you stop? He says, when I want to stop, it's quite difficult for me to stop. Then whilst he's in the party, people will be taking his phone numbers. And he sees big shots in our society. In it. One story I also heard, a lady who is now a lesbian. Also, I'm saying this because of our parents, we need to be careful with our children. On vacation, or it was said, yeah, she said it was an inter, inter what we call the inter senior high school games. And uh, one of the ladies who saw her says that uh, she assured herself and needed an assistance. So she went to a dormitory and provided assistance to this lady. So the lady became her friend. And vacation, the lady invited her to her home and introduced her to the mother and the parents and everything, thinking that this is my school friend. Unknowing to this lady, the young lady was already into lesbianism. Very unfortunately for her, when sometimes they are taking their shower together, this young lady's friend will be admiring her body. You have hair at this place, you have hair there, you have that, you have that. And will be touching her. And she felt that this is just a normal, it says, oh, you, this thing is not good. This, she was just brushing it off. But subtly, this lady friend of her began to masturbate with her. By the time she could say Jack, she was in it. I have delivered by the grace of God a young lady in one of my stations. At age 13, her cousin came to visit her, her cousin, in vacation time. And 
they normally go out to fetch water from a stream. And when they are going to fetch the water on the stream, this cousin of hers will ask her to lie down, and she will lie on her. And will just be, I don't know how to uh, describe whether, she will treat anybody with her. The English word is not coming under her. When they are doing that, then she taught her how to masturbate with her urine. By the time she realized, her cousin has introduced her into lesbianism. By the grace of God, we prayed with her, we delivered her by God's grace. But it went on till she was even introduced into demonism. And the demons who wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, every night, 2 a.m., that's when the spirit comes to wake her up. And the spirit will lead her to take a certain kind of dress. And she'll be walking in the town where we were pastoring at night. She will walk in the town from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. And she'll come and sleep. When she confided in me and she said she needed help, at one of our youth camps, I prayed with her and I wanted to visit her at home. When I went to her home, I realized that the parents didn't know anything. Sometimes our children can hide things from us, they can hide. My prayer is that as we learn to abide by the principles and the values of the kingdom of God, young men and young women here, if you are struggling with things, confide in your parents. Don't go to that level where you become so addicted and you are broken. This young lady, when I went to her house, it was sad for me anyway, but thank God now she's well. The father said to me, Pastor, my, my daughter is a very good girl. She doesn't go anywhere. She stays in the house. And when we were going out, she told me, no, Pastor, you know, that you, know, you know me more than my father. That's what the young lady said to me. Parents, today, let's sit with our children. Discuss issues with them. Let them confide in us. Well, the senior high there, initially I thought it was young men who were learning young men, but now teachers are learning. It can be we. Even with uh, uh, the boys' school and the girls' school and all these music schools. And now, pornography is taking over the young men and young women. May, may God help us. And if you are struggling with this, that is why we have pastor, we have elders, we have people in the house of God. Let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. The Bible says that Jesus died according to us, the scriptures, for our sake. He was buried, according to the scriptures, for our sake. He resurrected, according to the scriptures, for our sake. He has gone to heaven, and you will come back again. But how prepared are you to meet our Lord and our Savior? How prepared are you to engage God? We want to live by the values and the principles. I will continue maybe another time. But where the direction the Lord has taken me, I just want you to look into yourself and ask yourself, what things are you struggling with? A young man, a young woman. Are you living with somebody you are not married to and you feel so comfortable with the person? And you think that if I leave, my daily bread will be lost. Don't you trust in God that God can give you what you need? Are you struggling with fornication? Are you struggling with masturbation? Have you been lured into homosexual? That you are struggling to break it loose? This morning, may you be crucified with the Lord. May you be crucified with the Lord. May the Lord take control of our hearts. The Bible says, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you, for which I receive, on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word, I preach to you. Otherwise, you are believed in vain. For what I receive, I pass on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So we need to confess our sins this morning. And ask the Lord to have mercy on us. Are you married and you are still going around doing these things that the world is doing? Are you unmarried but you are living with a married person? And it's all because of the food, the house. 
May God have mercy on us. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus died for us. Maybe you might not be struggling with all these things I'm talking about. But yours could be gossiping. Could be lies. Could be stealing. But this morning, as the values and the principles of God are being unleashed to us, may we be able to transform our lives with this. The value of self-control. Living by the self-control. The value of love. As a spouse in Galatians chapter 5. The character of Jesus. The fruit of the spirit. We will love to and live by this. The values. That was going to be my end. Galatians chapter 5. That was going to be my focus. But as the Lord has brought this thing. I just want us to deal with it. So begin to pray whilst you are seated. Begin to pray. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. At what point are you going to say that no, enough is enough? At what point are you going to say that I want to stop this? May God grant us the grace. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the value that is most prized and most challenged that we need to internalize.